This is a follow-up to a video that I posted a few days ago and this is kind of down the lines of um, what Dave Jones would call a trap for young players. In that video I showed this. It was a uh, engine stop relay that I'd uh, rebuilt and repaired for a diesel mower and uh, in that video I explained what I was doing. I went through the circuit that I designed for this and that is this and uh, so very simple circuit it um, just energizes a solenoid for around five seconds when the engine ignition key is turned off and this is a common failure point for these mowers and the uh, genuine relay is about a hundred pounds so I wanted to avoid having to keep paying a hundred pounds every year or so these do fail on a regular basis they normally have a small mechanical relay that's uh, way underrated for what it's supposed to be doing and the solenoid this has to drive draws about six and a half amps at uh, 12 volts and so I've got a dummy load on here that um, uh, gives us the same load there's an LED across it um, so I, I demonstrated the circuit for this in the previous video and uh, I went and plugged it into the uh, mower after that to test it and uh, first time it worked perfectly, no problems at all, turned the engine off. Um, but then I could smell something getting very hot and it turned out that the uh, FET was uh, cooking itself. And um, so naturally I unplugged it, the FET had failed, it had gone short and uh, that was kind of strange and this is definitely, um, as I said, as Dave Jones would say, a trap for young players. Um, I was fairly confident I'd designed the circuit correctly so I checked to make sure I got it wired up correctly. We'll have another look at the circuit and uh, this should have worked fine. Um, there's no reason at all why this wouldn't work. The two diodes um, I've added were just for spike suppression although this has a control turn off to prevent the back EMF from the solenoid from damaging the, um, the MOSFET. There is of course the possibility that somebody could uh, unplug the wire to the, um, the power going to the system and that could cause a rapid um, collapse of the flux in the coil which could damage the MOSFET or there could be a dodgy wire or something so I added these just for safety and also in case I ever wanted to use the same circuit for something else. But there's no reason this should have failed and if we look at the um, spec sheet then uh, we'll see why it should be fine. Incidentally, I did change the MOSFET type to a 4905. Um, that gave me much better overhead than the one I specified in the previous video. Now, if we look at the spec sheet for the device in question, it has a, a maximum current handling capacity, constant current of 74 amps. Peak current, um, it can handle uh, well over 250 amps so it should have been fine and even at high temperature um, it can handle 52 amps and um, as I say it uh, got extremely hot and failed now the on resistance should be 0 0.02 ohms so if we work out how much power that should be dissipating then we can better go on the rule of current square times resistance so the coil was driving or solenoid was um, drawing about six and a half amps so 6.5 squared is 42.25 and if we multiply that by the resistance uh, we should get about 0.845 watts and looking at the spec sheet further for this I won't go through the entire spec sheet but the next important figure on this page is the one at the bottom and it gives us the junction to ambient uh, temperature rise per watt and it's saying 62 degrees so if we plug that value in so multiply 62 by the value we have here the temperature rise should have been about 52 degrees centigrade that is without any heat sinking whatsoever now as it turned out what I'd actually done you can kind of see I've written on the diagram here 20 degrees per watt so I did put a small metal plate uh, of the right size to give me approximately 20 degrees centigrade per watt and so if we plug that value in 
then we start off with our 0 0.845 watts multiply that by 20 and that should give us about 17 degrees centigrade rise in temperature uh, it's only on for a few seconds so it wouldn't be quite as high as that because there would be some thermal mass but assuming that um, it's on indefinitely that's kind of what it would go up to okay so there's no reason this should have failed so um, this is definitely one of these things that if you're not uh, experienced in electronics you might well start thinking you've done something wrong with the design and uh, but I knew that wasn't the case so I was fairly confident that this should have worked fine and it just isn't so what I've done is gone back I came back to the lab replaced the um, device and I put a scope across that I was actually using the board um, but I've got the same setup now on the bench got it clipped to a heat sink you'll see why in a few seconds and I've got this connected to the lab supply. Uh, the lab supply is set to give 6.5 amps at 12 volts. It's going through the MOSFET to drive the dummy load, which has got the same um, DC resistance as the solenoid uh, that we were trying to drive. And um, I've got this set up in exactly the same way that we have here. The only difference is instead of it being driven through a transistor, um, this is just floating so we can pull it high or low and the transistor does a fairly good job of this it's not a case of it being underdriven. Um, I was getting exactly the same results with this setup and you'll see the issue in a few seconds so I'll power this up while I'm doing this we'll use the thermal camera to look at the temperature of the device that we're currently testing and um, we'll see how it varies now there is a pointer on the screen of this thermal camera but it's not really lined up at this close range there's only a few inches between the camera you're looking through and the uh, bench uh, so I've got to put the thermal camera way too close and it means that the designator on its screen is not really pointing in the right place so uh, I will move the camera to the hottest spot but just bear in mind that's not where the uh, center point designator is on the thermal image camera but it will be the temperature of the device. Okay, so I'll turn the bench supply on, make sure that we are turned fully off. And so we're now drawing zero current. And if we look at the device, there was a bit of a, a current draw when I first turned it on because um, the gate is floating, so it turned on slightly. Um, but even so, it's only gone up to about 22 degrees centigrade if I now turn this on fully um, the temperature rise should be fairly minimal and quite slow but if we watch the temperature rise I'll try and get the camera in approximately the right place I'll now turn this on you can see that immediately the temperature starts to skyrocket and if I try and get the camera in the right place even though it's on a heat sink we're already up to nearly 50 degrees centigrade Turn it back on. Turn it back off. And so on just for a few seconds we're up to getting up towards 60 degrees centigrade. It's, uh, and that's with it on a heat sink. So had it not been heat sinked then it almost certainly would have failed. And uh, we'll look into why that is the case. This obviously shouldn't be happening with this device. And um, if we look on the scope, the two channels, the yellow channel is the, um, the input voltage, that's the voltage coming directly from the power supply, and the purple trace is the output voltage from the uh, MOSFET. Now of course if this is working properly, with a resistance of 0 0.02 ohms and 6.5 amps going through it, then we can work out that the voltage drop uh, across this so we'll just work that out so it's uh, actually 6.5 amps times 0 0.02 ohms we should get about 0 0.13 volts so in other words these two traces should be 0 0.13 volts um, separated and incidentally that if we turn that into uh, a temperature rise for uh, an unheat sinked device. So if we take this uh, value at 0.13 volts we can then work out the um, resistance of the device. So 0.13 
uh, volts. We'll divide that by the current and that gives us 0 0.02 as we'd expect because that's how we worked out the uh, voltage to start with. What we can now do is work out the expected temperature rise of this device even if it didn't have a heat sink. So if we work out the uh, energy dissipation in this device, so again it's current squared times resistance. So we know that the current is 6.5 amps. And now we'll multiply this by the resistance. And we get our 0.845 um, watts. Multiply that by 62, and as before, we get around 52 um, degrees centigrade. And that's without a heat sink, and we saw that even with a heat sink, it's going way over that. So what we'll do now is we'll look at the scope, and I'll turn the MOSFET on and I'll stop the capture. So I can't leave it on too long because it will fry itself. Uh, and then we'll examine the results that we're getting. So I'll start this up. Turn it back off. And what we can see is that we're getting, this is set to two volts per division on both channels, uh, but we're getting four divisions. So we're getting eight volts um, across the device. So if we work out the resistance of the device, so we're getting eight volts. We know the current 6.5 amps. So the resistance is 1.23 ohms. And if we now work out the dissipation that we would get without a heat sink, so we now know the resistance. So it's current squared times resistance. Current squared is about uh, 42. So we'll multiply this value by 42. So that's our dissipation, 52 watts nearly. So our dissipation is almost 52 watts. If we now look at this in terms of the expected temperature rise of the device, we multiply this by 62, 62 being the uh, rising temperature per watt uh, without a heatsink. And so our expected temperature rise will be 3204 degrees centigrade. Uh, obviously it's not going to survive, that just means it's going to destroy itself. Uh, there is some thermal mass, it's not turned on continuously, but even so at that uh, rate of heating it's not going to survive. The real question is why are we getting such a huge voltage drop across a device that has a specification of 0.02 ohms? Now to achieve the 0.02 ohms we have to drive this in a certain way and we need a minimum of uh, minus 10 volts on the gate relative to the source. And we do have that, we have um, about 11 and a half volts, so uh, there's absolutely no reason why um, it shouldn't be turned fully on. And in fact, with this setup, we're getting the full 12 volts because it's not been driven through a transistor. So what I did, I went back and looked at this device. It's obviously not doing what uh, it should be doing. I'll turn the supply back off. I'll remove this from the heatsink. And I bought this in a batch. Okay, so these are the devices in question. I got these off um, a seller on eBay. And uh, these are all from the same order. They're from the same batch. And uh, as you can see, they look very different. And in fact, some already seem to have legs that have been trimmed off. I didn't do this. This is how they were delivered. Um, but if we look at these under a, a microscope, you can see that they do look significantly different. The one on the left is the one that we were just testing and you can see it looks very different to the one on the right. Okay, so we'll go back and we'll test one of the um, other types. So we've got two distinct uh, uh, appearances here. So we'll test one of the other ones. It's got exactly the same part number on it. It's an IRF4905. So we'll clip this onto the heatsink, connect it up in exactly the same way as we had the other one connected. Okay, so we've now got this set up in exactly the same way that we had before. Get the thermal camera on standby. I turn the power supply back on, 
make sure that we are turned fully off. Get the scope running. And um, the heat sink is still a little bit warm. So you can see it's still uh, warmed up slightly. And uh, what we'll do now is um, we'll turn this um, MOSFET fully on. You can see that uh, currently it's, it's sitting at about 24 degrees. The heat sink was fairly hot, so it's warmed it up slightly. But we'll turn this on fully. If we look at the scope, you'll see that both traces are now exactly overlaid. Um, I'll stop the scope and we'll look at that in a few minutes. And if we look at the device, hopefully you can see that. It's at 25 degrees. And it's, it's not really warming up, it's, it's doing what we'd expect it to, it's actually cooling down slightly, if anything. So it's sitting around 25 degrees, that's at 6.5 amps. I'll turn this off now because uh, the dummy load is starting to smoke. So you can see that despite a huge load going through this and really uh, upsetting our little dummy load here, this was not getting warm at all. On top of this, if we were to zoom in, uh, I've done quite a lot of testing on this already, um, we are getting about the 0 0.12, 0 0.13 volts um, across the device. So it appears that what we have here is a case of uh, an eBay seller either knowingly or unwittingly selling counterfeit MOSFETs. They are MOSFETs, they behave like a MOSFET, but they have a very high on resistance. In fact, the on resistance is about 10 times higher than it should be. Uh, so, um, as I say, a trap there for anyone starting out just because a circuit doesn't work the way you'd expect it to. Uh, don't assume that you've done something wrong. Always check that the devices that you've got actually work the way they should. There's an awful lot of this going on at the moment. Um, it's gone from uh, batteries that have ridiculous claims for capacity to now uh, MOSFETs. And I think part of this is driven by um, the cheap supply of laser printers. I think what's happening here is you can see the side of this device has a slightly textured finish, whereas the front is very smooth. I think what's happening here is people are polishing off original markings and using a laser printer to print on new markings and uh, they're duplicated, they're buying very cheap MOSFETs in this case and uh, remarking them as something that they can sell at a higher price. So um, I have contacted the eBay seller, he hasn't responded yet and um, if anything comes of it I'll let you know but as I say just be aware of this, it's something that can um, really complicate uh, system development and especially if you're trying to learn it's quite a good learning tool in a way, but um, it can be very frustrating, and uh, especially if you've got a big project, and uh, if we'd soldered hundreds of these in, it would of course be extremely annoying, but um, uh, it does test properly as a MOSFET, it just doesn't have the performance that it should. Okay, comments welcome. If you've had something similar, then please let me know. I must forgot to say, um, with the proper part fitted and this plugged into the mower it works perfectly doesn't get warm and um, does exactly what it's supposed to so um, it was a good solution in the end for the original problem